You have reached your destination on your left McDowell Mountain Regional Park. Hi everyone, welcome back to Suffer Travels. I'm Randy. And I'm Diane. This week we're at McDowell Regional Park, which is located east of Scottsdale in the Phoenix area. This is another one of the regional parks located within Maricopa County. This park offers hiking, biking, camping, and a lot of other activities. There are two fairly large campgrounds in the park that have a number of campsites. We happen to stay in two different campsites while we're here because that's the only way we could get our reservations. Like the other regional park, there is a visitor center in this park, and we did have a chance to stop by and speak with one of the rangers who gave us quite a bit of information about the park. Yeah, we just stopped into the visitor center. Um, it was interesting, they had a room with snakes and some tarantulas and the ranger that works here, she was very informative. Yeah, she tells us about the park, the size of it. What did she say, with 33,000 acres? Wow. It's huge. I think 80 miles of trails. Mm -hmm. So it's very impressive. That's true. And she said during this time of the year, the snakes are pretty inactive. Yeah, they, they like, like the, the warmer weather, you know, above 70, what's she said, 73 degrees? 73 to 85. Yeah, they like that what temperature range. And so this colder weather, especially in the mornings, they tend to be pretty slow. She says you'll see a snake very likely will be laying out on a rock in the morning trying to warm up. Or on a path. Yeah. Right. And they, they move pretty slow because they're stiff. Right. Which so, makes me feel better. Oh, good. <laughs> All right. Well, let's continue our walk wherever we're going. Okay. So we're staying in the Eli Rowland campground. Eli Rowland was the director of land management um, during the late 50s and early 60s. And he was responsible for dedicating most of this land to public use and what initiated them becoming um, county parks. So he dedicated 70,000 acres of property which became McDowell Mountain Park, Cave Creek, White Tank Mountain, um, Lake Pleasant, and a number of other county parks around here. Behind us is Fountain of the Hills, located in Fountain Hills, Arizona. The fountain itself is 550 feet, which is higher than the Washington Monument. It runs for 15 minutes every hour on the hour from 9 a.m. till 9 p.m. And if you happen to be in Fountain Hills in the evening time, they do have lights on the fountain and you can see it from miles away. In fact, when we were driving out of our campground, which is approximately how many miles? Oh, probably six to eight miles. Six to eight miles away, we could see the fountain. Yeah, it was, you could see it off in the distance. We were on a little bit of a hill and looking at, down over the valley and you could see the fountain. We couldn't figure out what it was and we kind of wondered if it was the fountain and it is. It's located in a very nice park and uh, we brought the dogs with us today to take them on a little walk and see the fountain. It's a beautiful area surrounded by beautiful mountains and like I said it's located in Fountain Hills, Arizona. Yeah and the park does have a uh, disc golf course through it so we've seen some people out here enjoying the park, walking their dogs, playing disc golf and such. It's really a nice little community center. This is a veterans memorial here in Fountain Park. And one of the things I found was kind of interesting is right there, there's a, there's a plaque dedicated to Bob Hope. Thought that was kind of cool. We 
behind me is a desert island. Not a deserted island, but a desert island. So this fountain's been around for 51 years. Um, it first shot water into the air on December 15th, 1970. Built by the McCulloch uh, Development Company. I imagine they built this to attract people here so they could sell and build houses in the community. It was given to the city of Fountain Hills in 1997 and they've taken over management of the fountain since then. And this is interesting, every St. Patrick's Day, the water shoots out green. But I thought that was kind of interesting, a little bit of history about this fountain. We walked around the park here and checked out a lot of the different art installations and watched the fountain a couple times. And we really enjoy this little park. It's a nice, nice place to come visit. I would say if you're in the Phoenix area, I would definitely recommend you take a trip out to Fountain of the Hills and you know just spend a little bit of an afternoon here. You could probably get a lunch. There's a few places here where you can get some food and uh, enjoy yourself. It's really, really an enjoyable little park. So Zephyr, are you ready to be the camera person? Here you go. You're recording. Yes, you are. You're in charge of your own video. stop the video right here to point out a dangerous situation that this owner has put their dog into. Hey. As you can see the dog is on a leash as they're riding their bike and he sees our dogs and wants to come over right in front of the bike. Thankfully this dog just lightly brushed the front tire and really wasn't hurt but it was a scary situation that I wanted to bring to your attention. As a pet owner we're always responsible for our pet's safety. And it's something we don't take lightly. That wasn't the smartest thing to do with that dog. there are known to be snakes. One thing you want to do is you want to wear like a hiking boot that covers your ankle and you also want to wear long pants that cover your ankle and the boot just in case the snake would come out and try to bite you or does bite you and most likely it wouldn't bite your skin. So that's one of the things I learned. We also learned a little bit about snakes that they primarily will come out in warmer weather between like seven in the 70s to the 80s. They um, will hide under bushes. So when you're walking the trail, you don't really wanna swat the bushes or let your, if you're walking your dog, go into the bushes. In the morning, if you see one laying on the trail, sunning itself, it probably is just trying to warm itself up and it will be pretty slow and stiff, but still be Extremely wary of them. 
That's all I've learned so far. Okay. And we haven't run into any snakes, thankfully. Fortunately. Yes. Not on this trip. Right. And you also don't want to touch any pieces of wood that you might think look pretty neat because there could be hidden bugs, spiders. The main thing would be a Scorpio. Scorpion. Scorpion. I'm sorry. So you don't want to pick up any pieces of wood. Thankfully, like Diane said, we have not seen any snakes on our hikes um, since we've been to Arizona. We did see one snake at a rest area one time that we walked through that next area. It was pretty messy, and from what we could tell, that snake wasn't poisonous, so it wasn't really an issue. But uh, always concerned with the dogs when we're walking. That, you know, they if they would see a snake, would they charge it or try to protect us and possibly put themselves in harm's way? So one of the things that we're now being a little bit more careful about is, is making sure that we have control of the dogs while we're hiking, have them on leash and such. And today that's a good thing because we've seen a lot of people on the trail walking, riding bikes, and some of these people have had uh, dogs with them while they're riding bikes, which I kind of question is, is that really a smart thing to do because you really can't control your dog that well when you're on a bike and the dog's on a leash you could very easily pull the bike or the, the dog into the bike and cause it some harm which you will see. It wasn't a rocky path or trail. It was nice. Yeah. Great day for a hike. Not a cloud in the sky. Warmer than you think it is. Yes. At least feels warmer than it is probably. Is what's and that's the way it is out in the desert. That even though it's in the low 60s, the sun is bright and very mild. Yeah. So yeah, it's a very nice afternoon for a hike. Well, we've been staying at McDowell Mountain Regional Park. It's another one of the regional parks in the Phoenix area that we've been at for the last few weeks. This one's actually been a little bit different and we actually had two different campsites. Right, right. And that was due to the way we could get reservations. Yeah, yeah, we weren't able to get a full week at one site and so we split it between two different campsites and actually the second one is fabulous i like this campsite right it has a better view of the mountains uh there's a there's hiking very close by and it just it, it seems more spacious than the last section we were in yeah it's actually a little bit larger um and it's i don't know if it's more level but the upper part here where we're parked on is very level and we were able to actually put the trailer back a little bit so we're actually into this rear uh, campground part of it, which is nice. Right. It's a very nice park. It's located probably five to six miles from Fountain Hills, Arizona, which is 
it's a lovely area. They have a really nice park with a fountain, and it just is it's a beautiful area to see. Yeah, we, we spent an afternoon walking around the park. Uh, love to have a park like that wherever we lived. It's, it's, it's large enough that you can walk around it and get some exercise. Um, it's very scenic. The fountain runs every um, hour. hour for 15 minutes. You actually can see the fountain from this campground, which is really cool. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, it's really, it was, I, I really like this campground. The hiking here is really good. Right. And all the regional parks are, are kept up very well. Yeah. Yeah. And this, this is no exception. This is a very nice park. The um, park hosts will be in here moments after we leave, raking all our footprints. And you never know we were here, you know, you know for the next people that come in. Um, unfortunately, I think in, we didn't get our bikes out on this campground. That's probably what I'm a little bit disappointed in. It seems the time goes by so fast, and then before we know it, it's time to move. Yeah. And we just haven't had a chance to do everything. Yeah, and knowing that we had to move in the middle, I wasn't anxious to take the bikes off the truck because I'd have to just put them back on and then take them off again. I sort of thought we'd take them off the second half, and I just didn't get to it. But this, this would be a nice park to ride. Right. Or actually, we could have taken them off and just rode over. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> could have rode them over. Yeah, we probably could have. So. Um, it, but... You know, this park has, the trails are so nice and they're not as rocky. Right. So you right. actually, I think they're better for bike riding. Mm -hmm. um, they're not at really heavy duty mountain bike trails. Right. So I think we could have ridden our bikes on and enjoyed it. Right. But then Zephyr and Monty wouldn't have got the walks that they did. And they've come to really enjoy going on hikes. In fact, when we walk them, they seem to know exactly where they are because they tend to turn, especially Zephyr. Yeah, tends they, to turn we, and wants to go down on the hike. Yeah, yeah. we walk by a trailhead and she's just heading towards it and says, yeah. let's go on the trail. Yeah. So yeah, they really enjoy it. Yeah, they do. Well, I guess it's time to move on. So you gotta smash like, subscribe, click the links down below so I make a time. Comment, say hi, hit the bell so I know I'll see you next time. Smash like, subscribe, click the links down below so I make a time.